Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at finance lease from a lessee's perspective. In the prior session, we looked at the difference between finance leases and operating leases, and I showed you when is a lease considered a finance lease, when it's not a finance lease, which is not, it's an operating lease. Now, the best way to illustrate the concept of a finance lease is to actually look at an example. So I'm going to go over the rules again for a finance lease. Also, I'm going to go over the actual journal entries and what you need to know for a finance lease from a lessee's perspective. So to work this example, we're going to assume we're dealing with Boeing Capital Corporation, a subsidiaries of Boeing and Delta Airline. They sign a lease agreement dated January 1st, X1, that calls for Boeing to lease a mobile airplane ladder to Delta beginning January 1st, X1. And this is what we are looking at, this, this mobile airplane ladder, which we're going to call it a ladder. Now let's take a look at the details of the agreement. Well, well, the term of the lease is five years. It's non-cancelable, which is important because we need that requirement. Requiring equal rental payments of 20,000. So the deal says, well, we're going to give you this ladder. However, you're going to have to make five payment at the beginning of each year, starting the day that you sign the lease. So starting today. So we're dealing with an annuity due. Why is this important? Because when you go to the tables, you have to know that this is an annuity due, not ordinary annuity. If you don't know, if you're not familiar with this annuity due, ordinary annuity, you may want to go to Farhat Lectures and look at the time value of money concepts. That's one. The fair value of the ladder is 95000 This is the fair value if you want to buy it today. And the economic life of the asset is five years. Well, that's the economic life and that's the lease life. We're going to come back and talk about those in a moment. The expected residual value is greater than 5,000, which is greater than the guaranteed amount. Therefore, we will ignore the residual value for the sake of this exercise. All what I want you to do now or know at this point is once the ladder is back to Boeing, the value of the ladder should be more than 5,000. This is the guaranteed residual value. Once that's the case from the lessee, from the lessee from Delta Airlines, we don't have to worry about this 5,000. I'm gonna have a separate session explaining guaranteed and unguaranteed residual value, but for now, I made it easy where we don't have to worry about it, but we'll revisit this topic later on. There's no renewal options for this lease. The ladder, again, would revert back to, the Bo to Boeing at the termination of the lease, and Boeing can do something with it. Basically, they can sell it to a third world country airline where they can you know, get some cash for it. Delta incremental borrowing rate is 5% per year, which we know. Delta depreciate on straight line basis, similar equipment that it owns. And Boeing sets the annual rental rate to earn a rate of return of 4%. And Delta is aware of this. Well, of course, we know how much do we earn, how much we would need to earn 5%. Now we also know how much Delta will charge us. Delta is charging us 4% since we know it's, since we know it's 4%, we're going to be using this rate because we know the rate. If we don't know the rate, then we would use our incremental rate, which is the rate that if we needed to borrow the money. So for uh, for the present value computation, we're going to be using 4% because we know the rate and that's the rate that Boeing sets. The first thing we want to know is we want to establish whether this lease is a finance or if it's not a finance, it's operating. You already know it's a finance lease, but let's see under what condition we met the finance lease conditions. And those are the five tests or the five conditions that I talked about in the prior session. The first test, is there a transfer of ownership in this deal? I don't see it. There is no transfer of ownership. Therefore, it's not a finance lease yet. Is there a purchase option? I did not see a purchase option. I did not see that, for example, Delta can buy this ladder for $100. Specifically, the purchase option has to be a bargain, in enticing the lessee to buy it. I did not see that in the deal. The lease term, is it e equal to 75% or more of the economic lease life of the asset? And the answer is yes. Actually, it's equal to 100%. So what we're saying, this ladder will have a five-year life and Delta is having the lease for five years. So it's consuming all the life of the asset. At this point, we have a finance lease. That's it. We know we have a finance lease. How about the present value test since we're going through all the tests? Well, is the present value greater than 90%? Uh, well, we did not compute the present value yet. We're going to compute it shortly. But the fair value is 95. As long as the present value 
come up to 90% of the fair value, we should be in good shape. And let's see, just kind of get an idea. What's 90% of 95,000? Just kind of, kind of prepare ourselves times 0.9. So as long as the present value are greater than 85,500, the present value of the payments, then it will meet a finance lease. Not, not that we need it because we already know it's a finance lease. Alternative use test, no. Yes, no, in a sense that it doesn't meet that test because Boeing can resell or release this asset to a third party. So alternative use test is yes. So it doesn't, yes means we don't meet that test. We don't, we don't have to because we already met the finance lease test. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to go over the journal entries for this example. Before we go over the journal entries, most likely you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate. And I'm glad either or you're at the right place. You have arrived. What I suggest you do is to go to my website, farhatlectures.com, and subscribe to my resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false exercises. That's going to help you understand better this topic. I don't replace your CPA review course. I help you along your accounting courses. Give it a try. You are, you are watching because you need help. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Like this recording. Share it with others. If, if you're watching, it's helping you. It might help others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So first, let's compute the present value of the liability because we have a liability, okay? And let's see from the liability, we can find out what should be our asset because remember, once we have a leased asset, we have to debit an asset and credit a liability. So what is the asset and what's the liability? Well, we're going to find out what's the present value. We're going to take $20,000 multiplied by the present value factor, 4.62990. Remember, this was an annuity due. And the present value is 92,598. Remember when we talked about as long as we are above 85,500, we are more than 90% of the fair value of the asset. So also we meet the finance lease under the fair value test, but we don't have to worry about this. Now we know this, this is the asset 92,598 and this is the liability. And we use 4% because that's the, that's the implicit rate. We know that the rate that the Boeing charging us is 4%. Now we debit right of use asset, credit lease liability. Again, we put an asset on the books and we put a liability on the books. And this is the day that we per that we signed the lease. We have an asset and we have a liability. Also on that same day, if you remember, we made a payment. Immediately we made a payment of 20,000. Immediately we're gonna reduce our liability by 20,000 because there's no interest involved and we are going to credit cash by 20,000. Remember, this payment is due immediately the same day that we signed the lease, the same day that we put the asset on the books. Now, what would the company do next? Well, what they would do next is they will prepare an amortization schedule for the lease because they want to know how much of their payment goes toward the lease, how much of their payment goes toward the interest, so on and so forth. Starting with January 1st, 20X1, we have a lease liability of 92,598 and a lease asset, but this is an amortization schedule for the liability. Also on January 1st, immediately we made a payment, 20,000. As a result, this payment reduced our liability by 20,000. Our liability became 72,598. Then, a year from now, we're going to be making another payment. Lease payments are always the same, 20000 How do we compute the interest component? How do we compute the principal component or the reduction in the liability? We're going to take the balance times 4%. The balance times 4% will give us $2,903.92 for the, for the interest component. And whatever's left from the 20000 so of the 20000 this much is interest and the remaining is principal, which is 0 0.08, eight pennies missing. Again, what's gonna happen after this, our liability will go down to 55,507 because we're gonna reduce our liability by 17,096, which will bring us down to 55,502. Then the process repeats itself. Of the $20,000 payment, we're gonna take 55,502 multiplied by 4%. It's gonna give us an interest component of $2,200 twenty dollars notice the interest component is lower than the prior period and hopefully this makes sense because the liability went down which is it means the interest expense should go down and the remaining goes toward the principal again we reduce the principal by seventeen thousand seven eighty the principal now is thirty seven thousand seven twenty two all the lease liability is that much we multiply it by four percent we repeat the process and by the time we make our last payment guess what 
we have a zero liability because we made the payment. Our total interest expense on the liability, our total interest expense is this much. And we reduce the liability. Remember, the liability was 92598 We reduced it down to zero by the time we are, we are done. And we made payments in cash of 100000 Now, let's take a look at the journal entry. So this is the table. You need to understand how to read the table. It's very important because you might be asked, actually, as a simulation to prepare simply this table. And this will be worth one whole simulation and worth a lot. So let's take a look at December 31st, 20X1. So by the end of the first year, remember, you don't make the payment till January 1st. But by the end of the first year, you have to debit interest expense, $2,903.92. This is December 31st. The following day, we'll make the payment and credit a liability called lease liability, $2,903.92. Now, remember, we have an asset. What do we do with assets? We have a long-term assets. We amortize, we depreciate the asset. Therefore, we're gonna debit amortization expense, 18,519.60, which is taking the asset itself, dividing it by five years, which is the uh, lease of uh, the uh, lease term, and it's gonna give us amortization of 18,519. So we make those two journal entries, December 31st, 20X1, by the end of the first year, okay? Now. What would our balance sheet looks like and what would our income statement looks like as of December 31st, 20X1? On the balance sheet, we are going to have a non-current asset of $74,078.40. How did you come up with this figure? It's the, the asset, original value of the asset, minus the amortization expense. Minus the amortization expense, this number here, gives us a non-current, a long-term asset of 74078 now, they might, they might ask you, the question could be, what is your asset book value at the end of year one? Well, that's the asset book value. They may tell you, what's the book value at the end of year two? Well, you're going to deduct an additional 18,519.60. So be aware, this is point, not comma, point 60. So be aware of what you are being asked. You could be asked many things. Also, on the balance sheet, you're going to have to show your current liabilities. What are your current liabilities? What are you expected to pay? In liabilities well here we go we already booked we accrued interest liability of two thousand nine hundred three dollars and ninety two cent and you're gonna have to make a payment reducing the liability in the next year which is the following day of seventeen thousand ninety six dollars now this is 0.08 rounding simply put you have current liabilities of twenty thousand part of it is interest part of it is principal they're both a liability they will go under current liabilities that's that's your current so remember, you have a short term. They might ask you about the short term. They might be asking you about the long term. Make sure you know the difference between the two. What goes on the income statement? On the income statement, you are going to have the interest on the liability, which is $2,903.92. And you're going to have the amortization expense that you booked here. So those will be two expenses. Remember, for finance leases, you're going to have two expenses. When we look at the operating lease, we're going to have one expense. Don't worry, we'll talk about that later. But the point is to remember you have two expenses. And this is what goes on the income statement. Now, what's going to happen the following day? You're going to make the payment. You're going to cut the check because the check is paid on January 1st. On January 1st, you're going to debit lease liability, $20,000. you are going to credit cash, $20,000, because you already recorded the expense. So that's why so you don't have to differentiate between the two. You already recorded the expense. Therefore, all what you're doing is you're reducing your liability. Let's assume that Delta purchases the ladder from Boeing for $5,000 at the termination of the lease. They will debit the equipment, the ladder, and they will credit cash for five thousand, what should you do now? What we should do, you should, what you should do now is go to farhatlectures.com, subscribe, work multiple choice, true false exercises. That's going to help you reinforce the concept of leases, a very important concept. Whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, don't shortchange yourself. Accounting is important. Accounting is critical. Good luck. Study hard, and of course, stay safe.